Hi, hope you're all doing fine. In this video, I would like to discuss standardization of anodontic instruments. Previously, several manufacturers used to make instruments based on their whim. As a result of which, several studies have clearly demonstrated significant differences in diameters as well as in tapers of instruments of supposedly same size. So to overcome these drawbacks, Engel and Levine have proposed standardization of instruments keeping in mind two factors. The first one being diameter of instrument and the second one being taper. So Ingil and Levine have proposed the sta standardization of anodontic instruments. So according to them they suggested that the first thing there has to be standard increment in diameter of any instrument as the size progresses. For example we have a 10 size file a 15 size file and so on and then we have 60 size file 70 size file and 80 size file if you can observe the increment in diameter from 10 size to 15 size is by 5 units and the increment from the 60 size to 70 size is 10 units so that's the first one they have suggested and apart from that no matter what the instrument size is the taper of the instrument has to be constant for any given instrument it can be a 15 size instrument or a 40 size instrument the taper has to be constant so these are the two points which Engel and Levin have suggested first initially and we have several other recommendations given by them and now let's look into them in detail now coming to the first recommendation instruments are numbered starting from 6 8 10 15 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, so on, 60, 70, 80, till 150. So we have these numberings given to the endodontic instruments. When I say a 10, it indicates the diameter of the instrument at the tip in one hundredths of millimeter. So if a 10 size file has a tip diameter of 10 by 100th mm or 0 0.10 mm. So a given number in this series indicates the diameter of that particular instrument at its tip in hundreds of millimeter. And secondly, if you observe the series, there is a definite increment in the diameter of the instrument as the size progresses and they have suggested that from the sizes 10 to 60 the increment to the each consecutive size has to be by 5 units and from the number 60 to 150 the increment in the sizes has to be by 10 units that is we have a 10 size followed by 15 20 25 etc till 60 and from 60 we have a definite increment of 10 units that is 70 80 till 150 so that's the second recommendation made by Engel and Levine and thirdly they have signified the importance of taper so how to maintain constant taper in any given instrument for suppose this is an anodontic hand instrument this is the handle this is the shaft and this portion is the cutting blade right so as I mentioned the tip diameter for example a 10 size file tip diameter is 0.1 mm so the tip is designated as D0 so D0 designates diameter of the instrument at the tip and then we have D16 that is diameter of the instrument 16 mm away from the cutting tip and then we have D3 diameter of the instrument 3 mm from the tip 
so the cutting blade extends till 16 mm so this entire portion is considered as cutting blade which is 16 mm and the diameter of the instrument at d16 is point 32 times that of d0 in other words for a tensile file the diameter at the tip that is at d0 is 0.1 mm and the diameter of the same instrument at d16 is 0.1 plus 0.32 mm which mounts to 0.42 mm this is just for example for sake of understanding so for a ten size instrument the diameter of the instrument at d16 that is at this area is 0.32 times that of d0 which is equivalent to 0.42 so no matter which instrument you take for a two percent tapered instrument the diameter at d16 is 0.32 times that of d0 the reason why they have suggested this is because if the diameter at d16 is 0.32 times that of d0 then obviously the increment in diameter from d0 towards d16 would be 0.02 mm for every millimeter increase in length of the instrument that is at d0 if it's 0.1 for a tensile file at d1 that is 1 mm away from the tip the diameter would be 0.1 plus 0.02 mm so this gives us a standardized taper so that's what uh, Engel and Levin have postulated now coming to the fourth recommendation the angle at the tip of the instrument is 75 degrees plus or minus 15 that is the cutting tip angle if this is the cutting tip the angle of this has to be 75 degrees plus or minus 15 degrees so that's another recommendation and then Engel and Levine have also proposed color coding because it helps us to identify instruments with ease so for a six size the color is pink for eight size it's gray for ten size it's purple and then we have a sequence of colors which repeats on itself 15 white 20 yellow 25 red 30 green sorry 30 is blue 35 is green and 40 is black and the sequence repeats so that's how color coding has been incorporated while mentioning endodontic files so color coding is another recommendation given by Engel and Levine and then we have various NITA instruments as well as stainless steel instruments so previously carbon steel instruments were used but now stainless steel and NITA instruments are being used to manufacture anodontic files because they are less prone for fracture because of their increased flexibility and most importantly their corrosion resistance especially previously carbon steels were more prone to corrosion due to use of sodium hypochlorite so these instruments are comparatively resistant to corrosion compared to carbon steel instruments so the introduction of NITA and stainless steel has also been considered as a part of standardization of anodontic instruments and coming to the next standardization previously reamers were manufactured using a triangular blank so we have a triangular blank or a square blank so reamers were traditionally manufactured using a triangular blank hence that's the reason why reamers have a more cutting efficiency than files and files were manufactured from square blank and that's the reason why files have more resistance to fracture than reamers because they're manufactured from the square blank so that was a traditional concept but now all the finer instruments no matter whether it's a file or a reamer 
all the finer instruments in the sense all small instruments are manufactured from the square blank and larger instruments are manufactured from the triangular blank the reason is smaller instruments or finer instruments tend to break at lesser force the moment we apply some torque inside the canal or the moment those instruments are bound in the dentin in the canal so in order to incorporate greater resistance to fracture finer instruments are manufactured from square blanks and larger instruments they are less prone to fracture as they have greater resistance to fracture and they are manufactured from the triangular blanks and the last recommendation for standardization is lengths of the instruments so let me write down here so we have different lengths of instruments short standard and long short instruments are 21 mm in length standard instruments are 25 mm in length and long instruments are 31 mm in the length so the length indicates the overall length of the file but not just the cutting blade we have a cutting blade of 16 mm in all the files no matter what the length is but the length which i have written here denotes the overall length of the file starting from the tip of the file towards the head so the overall length of the file can be either 21 mm or 25 mm or 31 mm usually longer length files are used in case of canines where 25 standard files are not suffice to reach the apical foramen to summarize two basic principles have to be kept in mind while studying standardization first is the diameter of the file or a reamer or no matter what the instrument is and second is the taper so keeping these two factors the following standardized recommendations were given by ingil in levine that's very important we have different numbers ranging from 6 to 150 each one corresponds to the particular diameter of the instrument at its tip which is denoted as d0 and then we have color coding and then we have definite increase in increment as the file size progresses ranging from 5 units between 10 to 60 and 10 units between 60 to 150 and then we have the angle at the tip of an instrument which is 75 degrees plus or minus 15 and color coding as discussed previously and manufacturing instruments using nitride and stainless steel so that there is better flexibility with minimal fracture and greater resistance to corrosion especially from fluids such as sodium hypochlorite and then we have finer instruments being manufactured from square blanks and larger instruments being manufactured from triangular blanks because square blanks have more resistance to fracture when we are applying torque in an instrument inside the canal and then we have the last recommendation that is different lengths of instruments it can be short standard or long ranging from 21 mm to 31 mm so these are some of the recommendations given by ingel and levine in the topic standardization for endodontic instruments So now after explaining uh, you the standardization of endodontic instruments I would like to discuss a few questions which are commonly asked from this topic so starting from the first one they can ask you a question regarding color coding for example what is the color of a 25 size k file and you can have four options like white yellow red blue so that's how a simple question can be asked from color coding and then we have a bit challenging questions based on the diameter and taper of the instrument for example so based on diameter and taper questions such as what is the diameter of a 2% 10 size k file at its tip when it is cut by 2 mm so in such a scenario let me uh, put the question again diameter of 2% 10 size k file when it is cut by 2 mm 
for which you should know the diameter of a tensile scale file. So at D0, the diameter of a tensile scale file is 10 by 100, which is equivalent to 0.10 mm, isn't it? So that's the diameter of tensile scale file at D0, 0.1 mm. So when it is cut by 2 mm, he is simply asking you the diameter of that file at D2. So at D2, what would be the diameter? So as I previously mentioned, in a 2% file, the diameter increment would be 0.02 mm for every 1 mm increase. 0.02 mm for every millimeter. If consider this as a file, a 2% file, this to be D0 and this to be D16. So the diameter at D16 is 0.32 times that of D0. So here the D0 is 0.10 mm. So for every 1 mm increase in diameter, the increment in diameter would be 0.02 mm. So that's the key behind this question. So once you understand that, so the diameter at D2 would be 0 0.10 plus 0 0.04 mm. Since I said that the instrument is cut by 2 mm, so for 1 mm it's 0 0.02 mm, for 2 mm it's 0 0.04 mm. And if you add this, the sum would be 0.14 mm. It's as simple as that. So again the question, what would be the diameter of a 2% tensile scale file when it is cut by 2 mm? So we should understand what D0 is and what its value is. And then the basic thing behind this question, what would be the magnitude of increase in diameter of an instrument for every 1 mm? If it's a 2%, it's 0.02 mm for every 1 mm. If it's 4%, it's 0.04 mm. If it's 8%, it's 0.08 mm. As simple as that. Okay, so that's another question format which we can expect from this topic. And then as I discussed previously regarding color coding, we can have another a straightforward question asking you the angle at tip of an instrument which is around 75 degrees plus or minus 15. And then we have several other questions based on the lengths of instruments. Which of the following is not the size of the instrument available? So you will have four options like 21 mm, 25 mm, 28 mm and then 31 mm. So which of the following lengths are not available? So you need to know the standard lengths which are available and rule the odd one out. So these are some of the model questions which we can expect from this topic. That is standardization of anodontic instruments. Once you understand the concept behind this, it will be easier for you, especially while dealing with problems regarding diameter as well as taper. So the basic key lies in understanding the concept. Once you understand the concept, it will be easier for you to solve any kind of question. So thank you for watching.